So here we have another example of how related rates is going to operate. In this figure below, we're going to show the geometry of a launch for a balloon. The balloon is rising and the distance from the ground can be described as y. The angle of elevation for a certain observer is going to be called theta. And we have the, the distance from the observer to um, the point where the balloon was taken was 200. Um, an equation expressing this relationship can, give, can be given by the trigonometric relationship. Tangent of theta is equals y over 200. Think about it, this is a right triangle, and uh, we can do opposite over adjacent being the tangent of theta. Now, with this, we can pretty much um, find what is going to be the rate of change in elevation um, from the, the balloon with respect to the observer. Okay, so let's take a look of how will we go uh, with that. First, we find uh, the derivative um, doing uh, differentiation to both sides of the equation. So we use the chain rule, and we're going to get that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and we can multiply by the, t, the theta the t. And on the other side, this is going to be 1 over uh, 200 the y dt. Notice that uh, y, we take the derivative of y, which is 1, we multiply by the chain rule, which is the y dt, and so we obtain this relationship. Now, at this point, uh, we want to we, we we can simplify this by writing this as um, the theta dt equals the y dt over 200 secant squared. If we remember that secant is one over cosine, then we can flip around this trigonometric identity and say the y dt is um, the theta dt is the y dt cosine squared over 200. Then at this point, uh, if we have information on what the angle of elevation is at any given point, uh, let's say, for example, if we assume that uh, theta is 0.381 at a certain time, like let's say 20 seconds, then uh, we're going to find out um, what is uh, the, ch the rate of change of the theta dt if we have information with um, the rate of change of the height. So in this case, notice that we obtain that information by um, obtaining the height here with the information of the triangle. If we have that um, tangent of theta is uh, y over 200, well, we're going to be able to find y just by applying uh, the fact that uh, theta is going to be 0.381. Then with that, we're going to obtain that y is 120. Now, with that information, we can get the information about what is the distance that we're having here in this case, which is going to be uh, 233.24. And uh, with that, we're going to be able to find a cosine of theta because the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, then uh, we can find that the cosine of theta is going to be 0 0.86. With that, we can find, finally, the last step and find what is the rate of change of theta with respect to d. Now, a lot of geometric formulas are used on many of the different cases that we can do for related rates. So we can uh, always remember things like the area is one half of the base by the height. On um, the case of triangles, um, think about like the area and the perimeter of um, parallelograms, the area and the circumference of a circle, uh, and things like the volume of a cylinder or a sphere, or maybe a um, parallelopiped or a cone. All this information and all this we can get multiple things. We can get volume, surface area, uh, lateral area, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's going to help us find relationships that we can use on our related rates. So now let's take a look to another example and see how those related rates are going to operate. So in this example, we have that an oil rig is springs a leak in the seas. 
and the oil is spreading in a circle patch around the wreck. The, if the radius of the oil patch is increasing about 30 meters per hour, how fast is the area of the patch increasing when the patch has a hundred uh, meters? So uh, let's do this from the scratch. So here we have a circle and we're going to deal with a circle. Okay, and this circle is going to have certain radius. This radius is changing. Now, what do we want to know? So first, the radius of the oil patch increases at 30 miles per hour. So we know we know that the RDT is equals to 30 miles per hour. Okay, why am I getting arrows here? Okay, this is much better. So the RDT is equals 30 miles per hour. And um, we want to know how fast is the area increasing. So the area DT. Oh, but we want to know when a specific value is happening. So we can call this when uh, the radius is equals 100. Okay, so we want to know this. Okay, so this is the information that we have. And uh, with that information, it should be enough uh, to find this. So the first is that at this point, we know that we want to know about the area. So we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. That's the relationship of um, the area of a circle. Okay, so let's draw our circle again. We have a circle, radius r. Okay. We can take the root of here, the root of the a, the t. We're assuming that the area is changing with this respect to time. So the radius is going to change with respect to time, and it's going to be 2 pi r times the r, d, t. Both are functions of the time. Now we have a related rate situation here. And uh, we have information that we can use. The r, d, t is 30 miles per hour, so we actually know what this is. The ADT is going to be um, 60 pi r, um, 60 pi r, and this is miles per hour. Now, because we care about when r is equals 100, then the ADT, when r is equals 100, is just uh, 60 by, by 100. Um, so it's going to be 16,000 pi miles per hour. And so this is going to be our final rate of change in this case. Now, let's take a look at another example that we can use with um, trigonometrical uh, entity. So we have a spherical balloon is inflated so that radius r increases at a rate of 0.5 centimeters by second. How fast is the volume of the balloon increasing when the radius is 4? So now let's do the same thing as we did before. And uh, let's just do this in... Let's just do this in the whiteboard. So this is a spherical balloon. And the information that we have about it is um, that the, the radius is increasing at certain rate. So we have the RDT is equals to 0.5 centimeter per second. 
So this is the right change and it's fine because it's in the top, right type of units. Uh, and that's the only information that we have. They're asking us what is the rate of change of the volume with respect to time when the radius is four centimeters. So that's the whole information. Now, let's write again here uh, a picture of picture of our the sphere. And this is our radius. Now, the volume for a sphere is 4 thirds of pi r cubed. Then we can find the rate of change assuming that this is a function of time and this is a function of time. We can find the VDT is going to be 4 pi r squared the RDT. We do have information about what R, the RDT is, it's one half. So um, we can rewrite this as the VDT is going to be 2 pi R square. I remember this was one half, so one half by four becomes this two. And now we have this information for the volume with respect to time. Because we care when the radius is four, then we do the VDT when r is equals 4, and that's just 2 pi 4 square. So this is 16, so this is going to be 32 pi. And obviously, uh, notice that this, this, um, this rate of change was a centimeter by second, and this is a centimeter square, so this is going to be centimeter cube uh, by second. So the rate of change is change of volume with respect to time. Okay, so we are good in terms of units. Okay, so this ends part two of uh, the rate of change. Part three, we're gonna see some more examples of this.